First things first, you don't need anything more than elementary school math to be able to do this, and we're going to be covering that today anyway, so you've, you've got all your bases covered. But this is a technique that really will allow you to count all the way up to 31 on one hand, and with two hands, up to 1023. Now, I understand that math isn't necessarily everybody's thing, so I'm going to give you um, some advice on how to do this using sort of a tricky way, and then I'm going to explain how it works, and then finally I'm going to explain some cool stuff you can do with this technique that you can't do with traditional counting techniques. So what exactly are we doing here? We are counting using binary. Now I'm going to have my hands up like this during the video. The idea being that this is typically how you would look at your hands when you're counting, and I want to show you what I'm doing essentially from your perspective, right? Um, we're going to go from right to left because that's how numbers work. I mean, if, you know, you're adding a digit, right? You're going from like nine to ten. Where do you put the new digit? On the left side. So that's what we're doing here, right? And I'm going to give you an example of me counting just real quick, and I want to see if you can detect a pattern. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Do you see what's going on here? All right. I bought this whiteboard for you guys. So um, it looks like it might be time to break out my handy dandy crooked whiteboard. The idea behind base systems is that you can only have so many digits, right? When you run out of digits, you move your number over one and then you continue counting. We use a base 10 system, which means that we have digits from zero all the way up to nine. And then 10, since it's our base, does not have a digit. We instead use a combination of two digits. So to make this more obvious, we say this is a digit, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we don't have a digit for, for 10. So what we do is we go over here and we add a one. Let's just say we have zeros ad infinitum, right? And then this becomes another zero. Do you see how this works? Uh, we basically just restart here at the top and then we go through this again. And then once we get to 19, which is this plus nine, I add a two here, and so on and so forth. So we can, in theory, as long as we have infinite space to count up, we have room for an infinite amount of numbers. Now, this manifests in uh, some interesting ways. Let's take the number 213, right? 213. This is our ones place. This is our tens place, and this is our hundreds place. By counting all the way up to 213, it means that this side of the equation, the ones field, right, has gone from zero to nine almost 22 times. Uh, same thing here. In order to get to having this value, we had to go all the way to nine and then go all the way to the beginning again um, to get this up from a one to a two. And then each of these can be broken down as follows. This is equal to two times 100, because it's the 100s place, plus one times 10, plus three times one. And this looks really clean because we use a base 10 system. And even though these numbers don't necessarily have anything to do with each other, um, they look like they do because uh, they're powers of 10, right? Um, every time I multiply this by 10, I'll add a zero. And this goes on, in theory, forever. Now, binary is a little different because binary is a base two system. When we get to the number two, we increase our position. So let's say we're counting, right? 
I'll add a bunch of zeros to all of our places so you can kind of see what we're getting at. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go 1, just like I did last time, but I don't have a number 2 in binary, right? Because it's a base 2 system. So what do I do? I go back here, right? 0. Put a 1 here. So that means that instead of going 0, 1, 2 in binary, we go 0, 1, 2. It looks like a 10, but it's actually 1, 0, or 2. And this continues, right? So let's just imagine that uh, I want to count all the way up to something like 8. How do I do that? Well, I'd count up like 1, 10, or 2. I'm sorry, force of habit. I'll add another 0 because it's, it's full, and then I'll go on to here. Notice it looks like it's filling it up from uh, right to left, and then every time it's full, we add another digit so we can move up. And this leads to some really, really, really interesting math. This is the last thing I'll use the whiteboard for, I promise. I'll put it away, and when I use my fingers, this might seem a little bit more intuitive. So, let's just say we got a number like this in binary. If we were using the base 10 system, then this would be the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, whatever, right? Because those are the powers of 10. But this is a base 2 system, so instead we use the powers of 2. What are the powers of 2? Well, we take a number, we multiply it by 2, and that's how we know it's the next one. So we got the 2's place, the 4's place, the 8's place, the 16, 32, 64, 128, and so on and so forth. Um, because this is the number directly before it times 2. Eight times two is 16, four times two is eight, and so on and so forth. Now, if you've ever played the game 2048, I know it was really big back, um, I think maybe in 2014, 2015. Um, it's really fun, I really enjoy it. But you'll notice that these numbers look familiar um, because the powers of two are the ways you, like the, those are the blocks that you, you deal with in, this, in the game. Whenever you have, like for example, two, two blocks and you merge them together, you get a four and so on and so forth. I erased the number we were gonna be looking at, didn't I? So let's take a look at this binary number again, right? This is my ones place, ones. This is my twos place, twos. This is my fours, my eights, and my sixteens. So what does this number represent? Well, We've got a 1 in the 4's place, which means we can add a 4. And we've got a 1 in the 16's place, which means we can add a 16. This number is equal to in a base 10 system, right? So let's just say this is a B10, base 10. 20. This is exactly how we're counting up using our fingers. Let me show you what that looks like. I got my hands in front of the microphone again, and so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? So this is three. So I've got a one in the ones place, and I've got a one here in the twos place, and one plus two is three. Now what's kind of cool about this math is that you can do something called bit shifting, which means I take all of the fingers that are up and I shift them over by one. When you do this with binary, effectively, what you've done is you've multiplied the value by two. You can see this work in a base 10 system as well, because anytime you add a zero to the end of a number, it multiplies it by 10. For example, if I have the number 10 and I add a zero at the end, it becomes 100. I have the number 24, I add a zero at the end, it becomes 240, right? We can do that with binary as well. So this is 3, right? Let's shift this over by 1. So what is this equal to? Well, this is equal to 2 plus 4, 6. 
3 times 2 is 6. And we can do the same thing in reverse if we move everything over to the left. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now, we can get all the way up to 31 on one hand using this technique. So 1, so one 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then, you know, I go through it again. Each of these numbers, um, for example, I'll just say this real quick. This is 8, right? Um, is equal to everything that comes before it. So this is 7. I can count down that way. Um, and this uses exponential growth. So as I'm going through each of these, it becomes more complicated until I get to 1023. The reason being that this is my, it's my 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, 16s, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, and if I could keep all my fingers down and have one extra finger, that would be 1024. But I don't have that, so I have to do the one that's directly, uh, the only, my max value is the one uh, that number that comes right before it, which is 1023. Now another cool thing you can do with this um, is you can determine whether or not a number is odd or even depending on whether or not your pinky like this is up. So take a number like 3, right? 3 is an odd number because I have this pinky up. 6 is an even number because the pinky is down, which means I can bit shift it. You can't divide a number evenly by 2 if it is an odd number. Um, if you divide an odd number by 2, then you get a value that ends with 0.5 or 1.5. Uh, so that's kind of a cool bit of math you can do here. Another bit of math you can do here, just like I showed you on the whiteboard, is that you can very quickly determine what a number is uh, based on whatever the closest power of 2 is below it. Let's take the number 70. What is the closest power of 2 below 70? Let's count up. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Well, 128 is too much. 64 is less than 70. So we're going to have our finger up for 64. So 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. This right here is 70. You want 70 divided by 2? That would be... Sorry, I'll get this up. <laughs> okay, so this becomes shifted to here and this becomes shifted here. And that is equal to 32 plus three, or 35. Now another, another cool thing you can do with this is addition. Now this is very difficult to do if you have two hands because you know where is my second value? Uh, this is really only something you would wanna do if you can count a number up with one hand. And these numbers are pretty small, so the addition isn't, it's not really useful, but it's something you can do. And I'll give you an example of how it works. I lied. We're going to bring the whiteboard back. Now before I continue, I just want to say the easiest way to get your head wrapped around all of this is to practice. I recommend uh, choosing a number and then counting your way up to it, uh, just to kind of get you in the muscle memory, you know, sort of down. <laughs> and then once that's ready, you can start to do some of these other tricks if you feel comfortable. <laughs> So imagine I'm adding two numbers. We're going to do this the, the third grade way, right? So 16 plus 7. You probably saw a million of these in elementary school, right? And I bet you might have forgotten how to solve this, but once again, we're going to go through this, right? So what is 6 plus 7? 13. I put the 1's place here, and the 10's place I use as a carry, right? 1 plus 1 is 2. Therefore, 16 plus 7 is equal to 23. So when I'm working here, I've got three rows, right? I've got one operator here, or one value here, this is my operator, one value here, my second value here, and then I have a carry row, where if the number is larger than 9, you know, it's, it's 10 or larger, I take whatever value that is and I move it up here. Now binary is incredibly easy to work with this simply because you've only got two digits, right? You've got one and zero. So let's take two binary numbers and add them together just in the same way we were handling this. Let's pick an easy one, right? 
3. Now if you remember, imagine all my fingers are down, right? Um, this was 3. It stands for two ones and everything else is a 0. Do you see how it's lining up with the values back here? Let's add these together. Now, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. But remember, 2 is written like this in binary. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take the uh, ones place and we're going to put it here, right? And we're going to take the twos place and we're going to move it up here, just like we're carrying. So one plus one plus one is three. Well, what is three? That should be easy because we wrote it down right here. So three looks like this. So you put the ones place right here and we carry the twos place. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1, so you put a 1 here. Therefore, 3 plus 3 is 6. Very, very, very easy to do. Now, I can literally, if I have my hands next to each other, do this exact same thing on my hands. I've got 3 here, right? Now, let's just say I've got, I'll line it up like this, right? I've got 3 here. I've got 1 plus 1 is 2, down, imagine I have an extra uh, operator here, and then I just basically, I create 6. So if you're, um, you can do this either way. One way to do it is by having your hands lined up like this, right? So the same fingers are on either side, and that's kind of easy, um, and you just do the math. In your head, the same way you would do that. Oh man! I'll say it once again. Practice makes perfect. Uh, this is a really, really super useful idea. If uh, you want to uh, count up, I was going to say, like, one of the things I used to do is I would run up and down stairs to exercise, and I would use my hands to count up how many reps I had done. Super duper duper easy. But there's all sorts of things you can use this technique for. So if it was useful to you, uh, please let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions, uh, comments, corrections to make. I'd love to hear them. Uh, otherwise, uh, please subscribe to the channel. I release these videos once every six months or whatever. And uh, otherwise, you're probably not going to know that I released a new video. I appreciate likes and shares and all, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, but regardless, thank you very much. I appreciate all of y'all, and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks.